the cloud. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wasm Cloud Community Meeting, Wednesday, May 11th. Um, as usual, we have a few demos to start with, and our first one is going to be done by uh, our very own Kevin. So, um, fun fact, it's not going to be done. I had the, the code all ready to go on my Linux machine. And since I can't use my Linux machine to get into Zoom, I don't have the demo code on my Mac. Um, if I had like another hour or so to have you know prepared for this uh, failure, I would have been fine. But so I guess uh, next week I will probably be able to do the demo and maybe demo uh, setting my Linux machine on fire. Uh, so either way, it, it ought to be interesting next week. Uh, I, I had planned on demoing the <laughs> integration so that, um, you know, I was going to demo uh, some distributed tracing and some distributed spans and things like that. Um, so, yeah, it'll, I suspect the PR for that will land before the demo does next week. Should be good. We can always call it out in the Slack channel. And I know that we had a stand up like right before this that ran almost all the way up until time. And, you know, as long as humans need to eat, it gets a little bit hard to fit it in at that time. All right, well, that's fine. Um, I actually have a demo today also, so we can just keep on rolling. Um, and I actually control uh, the screen sharing now, so I don't even have to ask Liam, which is, which is pretty sweet. Um, all right, uh, can everybody see uh, the kind of the text on my screen pretty okay? I know that I have like a wide monitor, so I just always assume everything's gonna be tiny. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so the thing that I wanted to demo today is a little bit of a um, building on the last demo that, uh, that I did, you know, I think it was about two weeks ago now I was on vacation for the last last two weeks. Um, but I was showing off how you can push an actor to the GitHub container registry, or uh, in this case, you know, we're using it as like an artifact registry. Um, and we're kind of building on that by trying to include the ability to do this with our project templates. So what I've done kind of before this call is gone through and created a new um, hello uh, project from the hello project template that's in like my own branch, but that'll be contributed pretty soon. And then push this up to GitHub uh, in this repository. And then also came in and just added a few uh, secrets that we'll use in, in the GitHub action. You know, my issuer key, the subject key for a hello actor, and then um, a GitHub personal access token. All these things are kind of, you know, we'll have instructions on how to do. It's not too long. I just figured I'd go ahead and get them done and keep the demo as exciting as possible. So we have this hello actor, um, and I'm also running a Wasm Cloud host on my local machine. Now, one of the bigger problems from the developer experience perspective is once you get done with developing on your local, you want to be able to push to a public container registry. That gets a little hard. Not a lot of OCI compliant registries exist. And then even fewer of them actually support just plain OCI artifacts. A lot of them are coded to just take containers. So to make that easier, now we're including a release action uh, with our project templates. And the way that you trigger this release action is fairly simple. You can, you know, you can set this up however you want, but I have it set up so that if I uh, push a tag to this repository uh, with the name of the actor, you know, hello, and then a version, um, then it will kick off this release action. I'll go ahead and get this started because it takes a second to, um, you know, do the Rust build and everything, but we'll do that. Once this tag gets pushed up, you know, that'll kind of kick off this release. Um, what happens in this release action is we, uh, you know, install wash, we build and sign your Wasm Cloud Actor with your issuer and subject key. And then we create a GitHub release. So it'll be easy for you to find individual releases of your actor. 
and release it to, um, to GitHub CR. So in one fell swoop of pushing a tag, you know, this is how we kind of do it for the Wasm cloud assets anyways, we're just pushing to our Azure container registry, um, though we may end up switching to this in the future. Um, you're able to release your actor to an OCI registry. So if you come to actions, uh, you can see I've been doing this a little bit. I think GitHub is rate limiting me uh, because I keep doing this over and over. Um, but we can watch this. Uh, we can watch this happen. You know, the build takes about about two minutes. Um, but while this is going on, I can also talk through the build action that we're including. This one is a little bit simpler. Anytime you create a PR in this repository to main, it will build, check your actor for formatting, check for, for lints, which that's a Rust specific thing, but doing this for like a, a tiny go or an assembly script, you know, as we add additional language support, will just come with the project template. So this, this makes the, the, the iteration after running on your local machine a lot easier. Um, so why don't I go ahead and uh, show you what that looks like um, while we wait for this, this release to happen. So if I come in and make a change to this hello world actor, um, you know, previously it would say hello world, um, you know, we can say, or, you know, hello world or hello name, we can say nice to have you or something like that. We can go into our cargo.toml and bump that by one version so that we merge in, we can, you know, release a, a new version and uh, check out a new branch and then, can do a commit, uh, nice to have you, and then push. Now, as soon as we do that, we can come in, create a pull request like you normally do on GitHub. And as soon as you create the PR into main, that will go ahead and kick off uh, this, this build action. So we're, we're kind of including a, a little bit of a best practice for a Rust project here. Um, automatically. Uh, it may just take a second. So we'll come back while that uh, ends up getting kicked off uh, and check out our release. So it built and it tested just fine. The next step is going to be releasing to GitHub CR and to uh, GitHub itself. Just you know, the, the GitHub release isn't something that's required. I just find it as a nice to have so that you can go and you can see, um, you can see where that's been released to. Um, and then you also have a Wasm Cloud Actor artifact that comes out of this if you wanted to do any, any debugging. So the result of this is that if we come back to our repository, we can check our release and we can see our hello v020. Uh, it tells us a, um, tells us a uh, OCI URL that we can use to access this actor. And then also I decided to dump the claims information here. So you can see, uh, I may have the, in a different key here, but you can see the public key and the type of claims that this actor has. And this is really useful so that you can start scripting, you know what the actor ID of this actor is. Um, and it's just kind of nice to, nice to have. Now coming back to, um, Coming back to actually accessing this, what this actor is published to is GitHub container registry or GitHub packages. Uh, and you can find that right here under your, um, under your GitHub, I guess, profile. And then under packages, now you can see hello. Now, if we come here, this is actually default, uh, defaulted to private. Um, we can open that up to the world and change it to public. And there's no need for you to do this. Are you going to let me type it? Okay. There's no need to actually do this, but if you set it to public, that will actually let you come into um, a, a Wasm Cloud host like it is on my machine and start. In, hello. Let's go to 2.0. Um, and start this actor from GitHub container registry. So there's a couple of different steps uh, that you have to do manually, but the release action of pushing to GitHub, automatically associating it with this repository, you can see you can find it under the packages section here um, and creating the release with some helpful information with the actor. Uh, I really feel like this 
simplifies the process for anybody who doesn't want to set up a container re container registry in a cloud somewhere and make sure that it works with an actor. Um, and the the automatically built in um, you know build actions for PRing into main really helps you enforce a uh, some some good practices for building a Rust actor. Um, let's see, I can't really see everybody, so I'm going to stop sharing for now. Um, but I saw that Liam raised a hand. Uh, yes, uh, just a quick question. Uh, since when we're creating the template with, you know, wash new, um, does it make sense to configure stuff like linting as uh, maybe pre-commit hooks on the local client side? You know, so you could have that in uh, .git. Um, are there other things that we would be, should be doing as best practice there as pre-commit hooks as well? I think one really good thing, really good opportunity with Rust for pre-commit hooks is running a cargo format. Um, you know, running a build, running a test, or, or even running Clippy sometimes on pre-commit can be a little, be a little um, obstructive. You know, run it if you run your your integration test or something, and it takes you five minutes to do a commit every time. It's a little, uh, it's a little unwieldy. But the running the cargo format on like a pre-commit hook, especially since we are starting that Git repository, we probably could build that in. And that would be a that would be a nice. I, I'm. Especially for Rust, I'm not aware of any like third party formatter that would be preferred. Um, I guess we could always turn that off with like a little feature flag. Okay, I'll drop an issue on. Uh, do you want me to drop an issue on GitHub for that now, or how do you want me to document that? Sure. Yeah, you can drop it on um, project templates. Okay. Um, just one thing, uh, like I said, I, I really think that GitHub is rate limiting me because I was doing all this testing and um, wasn't getting any delays, but now um, yeah, it takes maybe um, a minute for these actions to kick off just because I keep doing it over and over. But in this PR where you know we made that really small commit, you can see that all, all checks have passed. If you look at the checks, we are um, checking the formatting, building the actor, checking for lints and, and all those things. Um, let's see one more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested in any feedback uh, that you all have here. What I'd really like to do is get this pushed up to project templates and then have, you know, I'll do some kind of call out in the community Slack and say, hey, um, please give this a try. We'll integrate this into our documentation. Um, but just in general, uh, this should really be able to help, especially as a template for other people who are building and pushing actors or at least looking for a way to get that into a public OCI registry. Um, one, oh, yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I just have one comment, which was that this is fantastic. Um, it was actually the first time I've seen this flow all the way through. And I think probably one of my favorite uh, pieces of it is when you included the wash claims inspect output into the, the release itself. Uh, for the package that, that's pretty awesome yeah thank you um that that is something that you know uh, i wanted to include the things that i feel like we've been wanting with our own um pipelines for a while which is showing the the oci reference that you're pulling from and that, that you can pull from and then the claims information so glad that i got that in um, one other win that I thought would be fun to share was, you know, I tried this with actors, um, but I also gave it a shot with a capability provider. And it looks like GitHub Container Registry does a really good job of allowing just OCI artifacts. So I was actually able to push the HTTP client provider up to GitHub Container Registry. What well, didn't require much, uh, many differences from the, the actor process. So I'd really love to add uh, some actions and for the capability providers as well, just because this makes it so much easier for anybody who's moving off of their local machine. I know that um, Matt Joe Bride, who's working on the KV Dynamo provider, DM'd me a little bit earlier this week and said, "Hey, you know how? You know, do I need to set up like an AWS ECR instance? Like, how do you guys do it with Azure?" And and so I was really happy that this ended up being a good. Um, solution because GitHub packages are free for for public repositories. They are pretty happy about open source stuff, so they're happy to give that away for free. So that's cool. 
All right, anybody have any, any questions, comments? I think my final question, and maybe Kevin, this is more for you. Um, the, the, including the claims uh, and um, you know, what uh, the authorizations uh, for the actor was great. Um, but uh, should we also put all of that into you know, some more highly structured format for searching or you know, like a JSON file, or I, I'm not really sure um, uh, so that you could pull it out pragmatically? So you can run wash claims inspect and then the address of the package as it sits in GHCR uh, and then use wash to emit the JSON output and then pipe it to JQ and you're good to go. So but that, that would... metadata exists inside that file. So it is oh, already in structured format. I 100% get that. Um... Uh, but I, in that case, I'm pulling the artifact down, right, using wash and then pulling that metadata out. It, would it be helpful, and this is a question, to pull, be able to pull, um, uh, you know, pull the hash of the, of the file out first, uh, you know, maybe to like set up a script or something like that. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. So it's a limitation of OCI that you can't pull metadata without actually pulling the binary. Um, there are there are ways that this might be that the you know pulling the metadata might be easier um, with a Bindle server versus OCI, but uh, for now we can't we can't grab the metadata like that. Okay, All right. Thank you. One thing. One thing that we always could do um, with this um, action, and I don't know if I um, showed this actually, but um, under the release under assets, we also attach the hello or the, the WASM file. Um, we could also dump the claims to like a JSON file and then attach it here under assets. If you, you know, wanted to come into this release and instead of, it may be, you know, the, the scripting capability of that may be a little bit clunky, but you could always pull the claims down, take a look at it in like a, a JSON structure, um, and then, you know, programmatically decide to download the actor later. We could include that too. I have a strange question. Uh, if you look at the, the claims output that's inside the release, there's two modules. Yeah, um, I did see that. I think what I, I think what I did is uh, I think for my issuer key, I also put in a module seed key. Um, I saw that too, just oh. as I was as doing the, because okay. I think that WASCAP will will display it as you know yep. as you put it in, but I think I used the incorrect key. Okay, yeah. So you you signed a module with a module, which is perfectly legal, but um, not but not convention. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, yeah, conventional, it would say issuer and then module. Um, cool. Well, after that, um, I have, unless anybody has any other questions for the, for the demo, um, I have a couple of fun call outs for next week uh, and starting actually this weekend, which is uh, KubeCon EU. We have a couple of great talks uh, and then Taylor, Liam and I will actually be in Valencia for anybody who comes by, please come see us at our booth. We'll be there most of the time, except for pretty much except for when we're giving our talk. Um, but we also have, you know, other than just Cosmonic and Wasm Cloud people, we have some exciting things going on. Um, Christoph with BMW is going to be giving a talk at Cloud Native Rejects. Uh, and it doesn't look like the whole, uh, the schedule is posted. Like if I click on talks, it doesn't show me specific ones, but He'll be presenting on Saturday, I believe, in this second block, the um, the 2 p.m. block. And, and Liam, you can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong there. Um, but if anybody's going to be attending Cloud Native Rejects virtually, please keep an eye out for that. That's going to be our uh, kind of the culmination of our machine learning work with, with Christoph and, and BMW, which is really exciting. Um, after that, we have the uh, KubeCon Cloud Native Con EU, where uh, Taylor and I are going to be giving a talk on Wednesday. Uh, the title is Disrupting the Downtime Continuum, which is uh, not only fun, but the talk is going to be a lot of fun too. So please 
come check that out if you're going to be there or check it out virtually if you have a ticket which should be super fun um, and not just you know Taylor and I giving a talk uh, we also have office hours uh, but then on cloud native wasm day which is like a co-located event um, it's on Monday so kind of the first day of the conference we have three different talks that are going to be talking about uh, wasm cloud which is really exciting um, one from Steve Sanderson is going to be talking about WebAssembly and .NET uh, in general, but we'll also talk about uh, Wasm Cloud as well in his talk. Um, and then we also have Alan Poon, who's going to be doing a lightning talk on uh, Wasm Cloud and the Bevy ECS, the, the game engine, which is really exciting. This is one that I'm personally looking forward to a lot. Um, and uh, uh, some of the people at Adobe, Colin Murphy and Sean, uh, who are going to be talking about WebAssembly, not only just in the browser, which is how they what they use for things like Photoshop uh, in the browser, but also on the server side uh, with Wasm Cloud as a, a heavy part of their um, their uh, presentation and demo. So lots of exciting stuff coming up over the next uh, next week at the conference. Hopefully, I'll get to meet some of you there, especially some of you that are located in the EU. Um, you know, there'll be there'll be three of us um, that are there, but then I'm sure they'll also drop it on the, the YouTube channel later on for anybody who didn't get a ticket. So um, we will get to uh, publicize that a little bit. For anybody that's here, who uh, anybody else planning to go to KubeCon? Let's see, Jordan or, or she, you or John. I am not. Well, me either. Same here. Okay, I'm just curious. It's you know, it's out there. I'm, uh, the uh, in-person conference again is is exciting. That those are those are coming back. Hopefully, everybody is is safe and it can all be a good time. Um, all right, that's what I had for uh, community callouts. Um, let's see, Liam or Kevin, do you have anything else uh, that we want to call out uh, to everybody here? No, just uh, like I said, a little a little upset that I wasn't able to demonstrate some of the open telemetry stuff. But um, I, the the upside is uh, it'll probably be in a bit more polished form next week. Uh, no, I don't have anything today, Brooks. Uh, great meeting so far. Oh, I do. Uh, maybe I do. Uh, Jordan, did you want to mention or talk a little bit about or do a demo of new labs and training you've been building? Uh, sure. I can say it to Brooks. Brooks, I need screen share. That was the first one to ever say that. I knew it was happening as like as soon as that, and I cannot find what is the option to give somebody else screen sharing. I've been criticizing Liam for oh, so long. Oh my goodness, the and, shoe is now on the other foot. How the turntables turn. Uh, I gave you permission to record local files. Is that it? It is not. You, it may, you may get a co-host. Oh, okay, okay. You got to go to participants and then go to more, drop down, and then you can make co-host. Oh, I don't have that option. How's that possible? Oh, Le yeah. oh Liam, you're still the host. Brooks is just the co-host. <laughs> can you not, can co-host not make host? I guess not. I was a host until you joined, I think, and then I became co-host. But, but you should still have all the rights of a host. You're a co-host, not. That's fun. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we've been talking about this a while. And um, we're, we've, we've done some work on getting the, the, the trainings um, out there and, and, and operational. And, and one of the things we had to do in order to capture like user metrics was... Um, you know, wrap it so that we could like know who was using our, our, our tools and, and make sure that they were working and, and all that stuff. So 
it's live right now. I wouldn't um, post it to Twitter just yet. Maybe give me another week before we start sharing it super wide. But uh, if, you, if you go to labs.cosmonic.com, we can start to see our um, the, the training is as they start to roll out. Um, and, you know, it, very simple interface, right? You'll, you'll meet, you'll get this little smiley face that's green. I don't know why it's green. But um, if, you, if you log in, you, know, you get this little button. And when we start, we start seeing uh, all, our, all our trainings here. And, and we can go through and, um, you know, and experience that. But one of the cool things about this is and why it matters to the community is eventually all the content that's backing this will be uh, in, a, in a repository somewhere. And what's cool is as simple as there's a wash intro as well. And you can see right now, currently it's, it's, it's been put into maintenance mode. And if I take it out of maintenance mode, um, <clears throat> it'll do its thing. And then without having to, well, it takes about a minute. And then without having to update the platform, we'll see the wash intro start there. And why that's cool is we're going to wrap this in a GitHub action. And then we can start doing like community driven um, um, trainings on the platform, uh, which will be pretty neat. Hey, look at there. And see, this is why we're not going to share it with too many people because CSS uh, is still a thing. I've got to figure out. So uh, yeah, no, um, uh, if you want to go try and interact with the intro to Wasm Cloud, um, I'm going to hide wash again, but um, and send me any feedback and hopefully soon you'll start to see a lot of content pretty much uh, just start to show up here. That's all I really have. Uh, that's awesome, Jordan. I went through. Uh, I'm, I'm going to going through the um, uh, the training right now, and I've got a round of feedback, and I'll try to maybe submit some of that as pull requests. Um, uh, a right to instruct, so we can um, uh, maybe get those announced for next week is what I'd love. Um, if we've got an easy way to help people get started and you know start to um, start to use and, and learn about the tools. Be something we could even do right from the booth next week at KubeCon. Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, thank you for all the hard work. Sorry, as a ahead. person learning, I think that's going to be really helpful. So thank you. <laughs> and Absolutely. diagrams would be nice. So I don't know if you guys have any already in the works. Yeah. It, uh, is that John that was speaking? Yeah. Sorry. No, not at all. Um, uh, you, John, I um, uh, agree. One of the some of my notes were that we should put diagrams right into the training. And I think Jordan has just been working on, you know, a quick first pass to get something in. You know, it's hard to edit a blank page, um, so to get something down, so we can iterate forward from there. But I think uh, the, even the first round of edits I'll do, a lot of it will be adding in some pictures and some logical constructs and making sure that we're helping people to understand what we're driving with the separation of, you know, boilerplate and business logic. Um, uh, you know, the separation of those two things. Nice. What for your apps you guys have like a wasm cloud you know image gallery for excalibur all yet or no um we don't have an image gallery a couple of the folks do use excalibur um and we've started to explore that brooks i, mean, I don't know you've been using it haven't you muted yeah i use it all the time for for like diagrams for um for demos um what's a Excalibur gallery. Can you like put together a bunch of diagrams and then share that uh, around to everybody? Or yeah, I think you can. But I was thinking more just like icons, like you know the Wasm Cloud icon and different things like that. If you guys had kind of go to ones for that. Oh uh, okay. Um, yeah, we have some. Let's see. I don't know if that's actually if that's actually public or not. But we have some. Yeah, that is public. We have some of the Wasm Cloud logos. Um, in like our branding repo. I just put it in the, the chat. Um, 
but then some of the logos from like our PowerPoint or like our, our presentations that we do for like the Watson Cloud architecture, we'll have to try to get those out as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, that way when I ask questions, I'll use the right formatting in case you want to steal it later. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, look, not stealing. It's a, this is a community effort and, um, you know, anything that we can all do to pull together to help onboard people and learn together, I think is always super valuable. Brooks, you got anything else? Let's see. I think that that is all that I had for, for demos and community callouts. Um, uh, that, so that's all that I've got. Anybody else have anything? Otherwise, we can just uh, we can just hang around. We can stop recording and then, you know, do what we normally do, which is come up with a super fun topic as soon as we stop recording. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, Liam, did you have uh, anything else? All right. Well, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you next week at KubeCon. Cheers.